darling Fumi Nation. <laughs> How are you? How are we? For those of you that are stopping by for the very, very first time, my name is Fumi Desalu Vold, and you are so very welcome to this very interesting episode. I had to put on the shades because you know what? It was a bit much. But you see, I also want you guys to see my eyes and understand how I feel about this episode. <laughs> For those of you that are asking, is this fabulous wig not fabulous and beyond? It is by OPV Beauty Room. They made this for me over the weekend and I've not been able to take it off. I live for it. I'm going to have it in black. I'm going to have it in urban. I'm going to have it in blonde. Yes, like a dark blonde. Fumi Monroe. Do we live? Do we love? And I am wearing OPV Beauty as well as Solana Beauty. When I tell you, this is what I love about having a bigger platform. I love all... Well, as you very well know, I love makeup. I love getting dressed. But above all else, I love my sisters. I do. I do. I love my sisters that are coming out with their own brands. And I want to support them. And it's not about me trying to make money from them, not making anything. But I believe in them. And I believe in Solana Beauty. This is the lip. And this lip is called Surprise. Mm, I've worn it before, but I just like it with the with the hair, with the orange shirt. The shirt is, uh, I think, Gucci, but I turned the collar in. It's a little hack for you guys. A lot of you have always asked me, Fumi, how do you keep your makeup off of your collared shirts? Tuck it in. In fact, let me show you so that you know what I'm talking about. That's the collar right there. You see? So what I do, I just tuck it in because what? Because it's a work week. And I haven't been to the dry cleaners yet. And this is a different way of you wearing your shirts. And then you just tuck it in and it's very clean and fabulous. Anywho, before I get into anything, I would love for you to watch this video. Mm -hmm. You are being a doormat. I'm letting you know. I'm looking you in the face because you brought this case here. But it's been no, five no. years. I it's been five, five years. years. Is you're not losing the whole oh, five years. Else. You're gaining the next five years. You are gaining the but next But I want to have them with him. You, I want to have the five years with him. I don't want to start I, all I, over again. That's too much. Right, you know, right. It's too much. And you know what? Right what? You agree? Yes, I want to be with you, but... Then you really? know what? No, you know what? All right, you either marry me or you reimburse me. It's that simple. I have the ring already. All you got to do is get on your knees and propose. Your Honor, she is not going to rob I'm me of my manhood That's and demand that I'm going to do it that way. I'm going to get a ring. I'm going to propose Here, to her when the time one. is right. Take this I one. Have not, I have not even take got to... Be Bless her heart. And when I say bless her heart, I sincerely mean it. Because there are a lot of women out there thinking that the ring will solve the problem. What she doesn't understand is that God Almighty from above is trying to help her to dodge the bullet. She refuses to move. She's so invested in the past five years that she's prepared to invest a lifetime of heartache because she doesn't want to do it again, because she doesn't want to start over again, because it is just way too hard to start again. And I understand. Because she went into this thinking that, you know what, i got to get something up out of this. Well, you, you heard her. I can't get the time back. He has to reimburse her some way or the other. I've got the ring. Marry me. But girl, when you marry this brother and you have children, oh Lord, have mercy. That's when the music really starts. Because he will up and go. And you will be a single mama. And when I say single mama, I mean that you are going to be single-handedly raising this child on one income. When it's so much easier to do it on two incomes. Push that aside because money is never enough. I found that out. Because when Ula is not here, I'm on my own. And I'm doing single mom duties. I have to work. I have to pick up Adrian. I have to run around and make sure that I get his dinner. Make sure that I got his bedtime. But I've got all kinds of stuff going on. Because guess what? I'm in London. But the majority of my followers are from where? The US of A. So you're five hours behind. So when it's midnight here, it's only 7 p.m. there. And you're still asking all kinds of questions. You're very demanding but I live for it because you know what you're reaching out to me and that's part of the grind 
I got a hundred things to do. But if I don't have Ula with me to say, help me pick up Adrian for nursery because I gotta go into town and have this meeting, A, B, C, D, ba, 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 I can't do it. And that's what you're setting yourself up for. You're going to be resentful. You think you're upset now. You think you're resentful now. You wait until you have the kids and see. And some of us, <clears throat> like my very good friend, Christina, she had twins. So you've got two children. When I tell you that you're on lockdown, and as they grow and you overcome one challenge, there's yet another challenge that will replace it. It is called parenthood it is called motherhood and it doesn't end until you jump into your grave and you say sayonara to us all until then you're a mom and that is the big duty of all i used to sit back and i used to watch oprah barbara walters and the others asking celebrities how do you do it as a mother and i never understood i was like what do you mean how do you do it as a mother i understand now I understand because it's a balancing act and sometimes your work suffers, the child suffers. Yes, I cannot be there for all of Adrian's plays because he can become... Adrian, the school sends you all kinds of activities. Look forward to the month of February. These are all of the activities. And I'm like, oh my God, I have a meeting here. Ula, can you go? Can we go? Okay, I'll go. Sometimes that's what it is. It's one of us that has to go. And Ula works and he travels for his job. So guess what? Because I'm a YouTuber, my work is more flexible, but it's not easier. But somebody got to do it. And so here you are crying that you've invested five years. Five years is nothing. It is absolutely nothing because you're setting yourself up for a lifetime of heartache. And you will turn back and say to yourself, self, what the hell was I thinking? It is so important, my darlings. It's so important. Listen to auntie. If you don't do anything right, make sure you marry the right guy. Make sure the father of your children is the right guy. If you don't do anything else right, do that because you can't change it. My son is not coming home today. At this point, I don't even know if I want him to ever come home. I really hate his dad, and it makes it so hard for me to like and care for him the way a mother should. Y'all will probably drag me in my comments, but I have to live in my truth. My baby daddy was bragging about how he took my virginity, and he kept bringing up old things that aren't even co-parenting related. So I told him that I fucked his best friend first, and that I never cared about him. I hate co-parenting with him because he won't let go of the past. We've been broken up for 10 years now, and honestly being with him is one of my biggest life regrets. But how do you look your own kid in their face knowing that it's impossible for you to fully love them the way a mother should because you hate their dad? The disagreement was so stupid and simple, but it resulted in my son showing up to school four hours late. Usually I would remove him from that situation, but this time instead of taking him away, I'm making him stay. Because you need a man that loves you, that understands the dynamic of a home. Because once you become married, you're a team. It is really truly a yin and yang. Marriage is a whole different ball game. And you think you're crying, you're not crying now. Because he will say, okay, you know what? I don't want the marriage. Or he starts to cheat or sleep with somebody else. The guy that is standing beside you is not serious. Because if he was, no way you would have to come to court and cry in front of Star Jones. And Star knows. She's been married a couple of times. She knows better. Let the guy go. Let the guy go. Dodge the bullet. Dodge the bullet. Dodge the bullet. Dodge the bullet. You will be happier. You will be grateful. Don't look at your girlfriends and think, everybody's married, I have to be married. I have to have this big wedding. I have to have a big baby shower. I have to have all of these celebratory milestones. It might be different for you, but you just might be the last one standing. And that's the case, I can say it in my case. All of my friends are divorced. That we all went to high school together, psh, that we went to university together, they're divorced. They are what? They are divorced. With their grown kids, they are divorced. Every single one of them. Let me just cross check. Let me just cross check. Let me just cross check. Yeah.
Yes. I'm the only one standing. I was the last, but I'm the only one. Because when you are younger, and this I know for a fact, the 20-year-old me, the 30-year-old me, the 40-year-old me, the 50-year-old me, I am the most happy in my 50s. I didn't know it, but yes, I am. I'm comfortable in my own skin. And I'm not, I'm not, I, I don't, I don't feel that, that I have to impress anybody or do anything just because you know what I, I want you to be to feel this way about no I've been there I've paid my dues and so when my gray hair does come out I've earned it I see how it comes along the lines of knowledge and one thing that I know is relationships I can tap into that it's not that hard it really is not that hard it's not that difficult you have to understand and you have to prioritize what's important to you. And you will realize that when you meet that guy, it's not even the size of the stone in the wedding ring because you are looking at the longevity of the two of you together. That you really raise beautiful children that become wonderful adults that don't have issues. They don't have to go into therapy for A, B and C. That is where you see your work. That is where you turn around and say, I did good. Everything else is not going to matter. And a lot of it you will not remember. But as you grow older, you want to have that person that loves you, that is your companion, that you can sit back and you can laugh and you can love him on the couch and he's snoring. It's not a big deal to you. He's your boo-boo as you are his. And you can share things together and you are honest about money and you are honest about sharing your ambitions and your disappointments and things that you're not happy about you're comfortable enough to say i don't like this i'm not happy about this that no matter what no matter what that marriage that gate is intact that your children inside of this gate will always be loved, protected, and be accounted for first before anybody else. That you are able to love yourself, really love yourself. Because this marriage is a team effort. It's a ship. It's a boat. And everybody on this boat is rowing. Ula's at work. Fumi's working. Even baby Adrian's at nursery. He's doing his little painting. Everybody on that ship, on that boat, is working to a united goal of togetherness, happiness, fulfillment in their dreams and all. The second somebody breaks away, the weight is now transferred to the other members on that boat. That now makes it heavier to row up the hill of challenges and you're going to have challenges in marriages because family members will pass away because you will have droughts financially because somebody will be sick because somebody will need more attention than others and on a tuesday afternoon without any warning you're going to be hit blindside by something that will affect the family but guess what you're going to keep on rowing you can't stop rowing why you can't stop rowing because there are other members on this boat that you're have to take care of now he's left now you have to start pushing this boat now you have to start pushing this boat this boat has become heavier you're getting tired it's like carrying a heavy grocery bag you transfer it from one hand because this hand is tired then you transfer it to the other guess what your personality your patience begins to wear thin so you're screaming and shouting at the, the children behind all of a sudden, reality sets in. You're really not going to make this. You're tired. You know what? F it. I am telling you, I have seen this happen many a time with my friends. Because you went and did this boat ride with the wrong partner. With the wrong partner. Because you know what? I've invested five years. You're going to invest a lifetime and you're going to regret it. And you're not going to want it. 
And they're going to go to court because guess what? He's not paying early money. Because guess what? He's not paying child care. Because guess what? He didn't show up for the kid's birthday. You're going to be, he's going to stab you multiple times in the heart. Oh, you wait. You think it's a game? You wait. I'm calling it as it is. I have girlfriends and I go and check on them every once in a while because I know it's hard and I feel sorry for them because they are beautiful women and they had dreams and they had aspirations and they all died because they had to divide themselves in two and play mom and dad. My girlfriend told me the other day, she said for me, I regret it. I regret it. Had I known, I would never have had children with him. And of course, I have to comfort her. And I said, never regret. You've got beautiful, beautiful children. Hang in there. Something will come of it. I don't know what will come of it. But I have to keep her going. Think before you marry a guy like this. If you, I get so many stories in my DMs. And I love all of you. And some of you are crying, you're all my babies, you're all my daughters. And I respond to you, some I don't even bring up onto the air. And I respond to you, if you are questioning the relationship, it's not for you. It's time to go. Take your wig, your glueless wig. Take it. Take your vase. And go. And go. And walk out that door. And believe you will meet somebody else. And if you don't meet somebody else, I promise you it is so much easier, easier, I swear to God, in this lifetime that we have financially, emotionally, to do it on your own. Do it on your own. And there's no requirement that on your gravesite that you know what, she wasn't married, so it's a stigma. I know you carry it as a stigma. It's not. It's not. It's not the wedding ring. It's not the wedding. What's important is the marriage. That right there is a whole shebang and you have to be prepared. And I'm happy in my marriage because I took my time. Oh, maybe God said for me, wait. <laughs> you ain't ready, sis. And I see the difference. I see the difference. All of my love, my darlings, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification button. Give me some super thanks up in here in these beauty uh, streets. And I will see you sooner than later. Ah, 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 ah. Before I go, guess what, my darlings? We having the first Fumi de Salouvold meet and greet. It's coming in March. It's going to be a fabulous meet and greet because we're going to have a what? A sister to sister. Yes, my darlings. We're going to have a live sister to sister. I'll be answering your questions. We're going to have so much fun. It's going to be fabulous. And it will be in March. That's all I can tell you. I've thought about it, thought about it. Yeah, let's do it. And hopefully, you know, God is good. I begin to come and start, you know, having some kind of tour dates. But Adrian is young. He needs his mama. That's why I haven't stretched out as uh, far as to the US of A yet. But I will in all due time. Maybe Adrian will come with me too. You never know. Plus Ulski. <laughs> all right, darlings. I'll see you later, alligator. In a while, crocodile. Yes, I'm watching too many of Adrian's cartoons. <laughs> so this is where I'm at. All of my love. Mwah.